Good morning. Welcome to a sunny book nook. I wanted to start a reading vlog today. Let me get on the fucking floor so you can see me. I'm in the middle of this nonfiction book right now called Hammer and Ho by Robin D.G. Kelly, whom I literally met the other day and he like knows my name now. Like it's crazy. He's like, he's so cool. Anyway, so I'm reading Hammer and Ho right now and it's so good. It's about Alabama communists in or during the Greek Depression and labor organizing and black belt self-determination and history and it's just inspiring and informative and really 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 interesting and there's a lot of focus on women's struggle and and position within the labor organizing and the communist movements throughout the south so you know happy women's month or whatever i'm like 35 maybe percent of the way through hammer and hell right now and i think the rest of the books i will be reading for this vlog will be by women and yeah i'm also in the middle of fiona and jane right now which is a new release and i'm like 20 30 percent of the way through that i'll keep you updated today's international women's day march 8th and it's always been a communist holiday um it's only recently been corporate pink wash type shit and i forgot to mention this this morning when i started this vlog but i finished, well I was in the middle of, um, and today finished Caliban and the Witch by Sylvia Federici, which is like a seminal Marxist feminist text. And it's fucking fire, bro. Like I have so many annotations and highlights and shit in here. And I've quoted this book so many times in real life to my friends on TikTok, on my podcast. Like it's just so good. I've been reading this for like months now at this point. I think on Goodreads it says that I started in February, but no, I was reading this in like fucking... December probably and before that too so it took me a while to get through because it's like pretty dense text it's history it's theory um it's 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 amazing basically we are looking at the history of women from a well okay we're looking at the history of women's oppression in the transition from feudalism to capitalism in Europe, and then also throughout the process of colonization. The subtitle is Women, the Body, and Primitive Accumulation. And if you don't know what primitive accumulation means, it's this Marxist thought and idea of like the things that you need to make the things, like in order to get the capital to create capitalism or to get like capital to create goods and a market you need to accumulate things um, and it's primitive because it's like the basic materials so it literally means what it says primitive meaning like basic and primitive and then accumulation meaning like you know getting shit so Federica sort of argues that the body is part of primitive accumulation and that it was one of the first things that was like as like bodies of labor and then also reproductive labor um in in women's bodies specifically she kind of delineates how class struggle was mitigated through misogyny and how it was reinforced by the ruling classes of the time throughout history from the 13th to the 16th centuries primarily she's really looking at and the primary thesis and point of this book is kind of talking about the idea of the witch and also like the the genocide that happened of of women during like the witch trials and that's what this is ultimately about but it's so about so much more than that it's about gender depression it's about the history of um domestic labor and medieval gender roles and social hierarchies versus the capitalist development and prostitution and the history of that and the history of the demonization of magic and rational thought as a construct it's just so good and i'm obsessed so i'm really glad that i finished this on international women's day like how appropriate how amazing um and i am 50 percent of the way through yeah i think 50 percent of the way through hammer and ho by robin dg kelly which is so awesome and amazing and cool it is a really narrow look at the 1930s the different class interests and struggles that were going on with the different workers and miners and, and people across the the south particularly alabama in like birmingham and and then in more rural areas the interracial conflict within the black community and then also the interracial conflict and the 
terrorism of the white legion and how anti-communism, anti-semitism, anti-blackness, all these things were like wrapped up in, in their ideology and their hate and then also like different approaches to communism, how communists would organize and how labor organizers and labor rights organizations shifted tactics and goals and plans over time and with various political strategies to various effectiveness. It's really, really good. Now that I've finished Caliban and the Witch and I'm halfway through Hammer and Ho, I was thinking about picking up Thomas Sankara's Women's Liberation and the African Freedom Struggle, which is another seminal Marxist feminist text. It's pretty short. I found it on, I found the ebook on Scribd, so I think I'm going to do some reading of that. I tweeted about reading this perhaps, and everyone is like begging me to read. Well, not begging, but everyone's like, yes, I'm reading this too, it's so good. And also I've been meaning to read Thomas Sankara for like a long time because he is a leader who talked the talk and walked the fucking walk uh, regarding revolution and women's liberation uh yeah it he, he slayed <laughs> like so i am going to read that and i'll keep you updated in terms of fiction mm, what have i oh 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 my gosh yeah um i'm in the middle of this young adult novel right now but i don't have it with me i'll show it to you probably tomorrow when i check in with you but i'm gonna I'm gonna get back to reading Thomas Sankara because I just finished the the introduction which like wasn't his words it was like the preface by the publisher but anyway. Hello I'm back on the floor of my room and today I have a little bit of a yellow look going on for you because I did not really want to change out of my yellow hoodie so drinking a white claw <laughs> this is the blackberry flavor I feel like the bar in the bookcase you know anyway update on the reading I did manage to finish Women's Liberation and the African Freedom Struggle by Thomas Sankara last night. I really enjoyed it. It was really good. It was really short. And I rated it five stars, of course. Um, if I don't read a piece of theory or nonfiction, five stars, it, it, it just means that it wasn't something that was heavily recommended to me. And I just picked it up on a whim, which I don't really do if it's theory or nonfiction. I will usually read stuff only because they have been recommended to me and when a bunch of people and a bunch of communists and a bunch of my comrades and friends have told me to read something it's going to be really necessary for understanding frameworks and histories of liberatory struggles so yeah that was my last read and my read of international women's day um <laughs> and today that it is a day after i am in the middle of a young adult novel right now called bruised by Tanya Boteju, Boteju? I'm not sure. But I'm like halfway through it and I like it for a young adult novel right now. I think that the young adult writing style is something that I'm not as familiar with anymore. So it's just something that I'm trying to get back into the feel of. It's not something that feels that natural to me anymore. So some of the writing feels kind of stunted. But again, it's just kind of, that's kind of on me, you know? I think that our main character is dealing with a lot. Her parents have just died. She's still dealing with the after effects of that and then also the complicated nature of her relationship with her parents. And she copes with it through self-harm. And now we I'm at the part of the book where she's just sort of tried out for and gotten into this roller derby team. And yeah, I think like she uses bruising herself as a coping mechanism. There's also a queer thing going on. Her best friend is non-binary and uh, yeah, I think she's, she doesn't think she's gay, but she low-key might have a thing for one of the girls on the team. I think it's fine so far. <laughs> um, it's probably gonna be in the 3.5 star range for me. Yeah, so that is what I'm reading right now. Hello, so it is the next day. The window is open, so if you hear birds, that's that's what's going on. Um, but I wanted to let you know that another book that I'm in the middle of, and you know, I'm I'm always perpetually in the middle of like a million books. I'm I'm a little bit further along in Hammer and Ho, so that's exciting. It's still so good. Uh, no real updates on that. I'm I'm learning so much about history and labor organizing. But I'm also in the middle of a book called Itza right now by Rios de la Luz. This book was, I am borrowing from someone right now, 
and I've been trying to read it for like at least a month but it's pretty short and I'm like halfway through it so it's also by a woman and it really explores um I think like Mexican-American identity but not really um it's about so the back says in her debut novella Rios de la Luz ex examines the lives of a small family of water witches living near the U.S. Mexico border exploring issues of race and trauma along with beauty and magic it's a it's a powerful reclamation of body and identity it's written very poetically and with really strong imagery but a lot of trauma obviously a lot of trigger warnings going in on this so yeah I I enjoy it so so far i'll keep you updated i might be able to finish this no real updates on bruised either i still haven't gotten any further in this because i've been listening to hammer and ho but it's so nice out and like sunny and kind of just a nice breeze uh so i might go outside and read this keep you updated wait before before i go off to read let me finish this book haul that I did the other day, or yes, literally yesterday, um, I lost the full footage of it, but I still have the first clip, and you will see it now. Also, I think I can do a little bit of a book haul of women authors. Um, most of this is nonfiction, but this is all stuff that I've gotten semi-recently, and it's just, it's stuff that I've gotten recommended, and I'll just go through them and, you know. Before I get into the women authors, I want to sort of talk about another Robin D.G. Kelly book, because I was telling you how I was getting through Hammer and Ho, but the talk that I went to with Robin D.G. Kelly, who is such a cool guy, they were handing out free copies of Freedom Dreams, The Black Radical Imagination, and this was published in 2002 I think but I am really excited to get to this the only fiction book that I that I have on this stack right here is The Employees by Olga Raven I think this was translated from Dutch and it's a really short novella novella and I think it's supposed to be some sort of satire on capitalism or something it's really short Okay, now on to the nonfiction. So I got Joan Didion Slouching Towards Bethlehem because every single person loves this book. Every gay person loves this book. Every lesbian loves this book. Everyone on my corner of TikTok is obsessed with this book, like the hot girl TikTok vibes. Everyone loves Joan Didion. And then my one friend was telling me how I would love Joan Didion. So I'm like, okay, well, gotta pick her up. And uh, this is, I think it was published in 1968 and it's an essay collection. So yeah. Then I have another like classic, like seminal queer text, and that is The Whipping Girl or Whipping Girl by Julia Serrano, a transsexual woman on sexism and the scapegoating of femininity. So I think this is just like, it's a, it says this provocative blend of personal essay, gender theory and trans feminist manifesto has received wide acclaim, becoming renowned for its unapologetic defense of both femininity and transgender identities. The video cut off at me talking about this book, but this is a seminal trans feminist text. Excited to get to. All right, I think I only have two more books to haul from that pile. I have Becoming Abolitionist by Derek Purnell. The illustration is so beautiful. And I really want to read this because I finished Mariam Kaba's We Do This Till We Free Us the other day. And I talked about it in my February wrap up, which if you haven't watched already, you should. Derek Purnell is someone that I followed on social media for a long time. And she's from St. Louis, which is where I'm from. And I'm excited to read her writing because she is one of the forefront abolitionists, I think, in our modern culture and society. So then I have here African Europeans by Olivet Otele. This is written by a history professor in the UK and I'm really excited to get to this. The text is kind of big honestly so I read the first couple pages like a couple weeks ago when I got this and it seemed really interesting. So excited to get to those as well. Okay I'm outdoors now um, and I finished It's A by Rios de la Luz. I thought this was very good. Like the imagery was really, really powerful. There are moments of it that were very beautiful and stunning and just would grab you visually, but there are also moments that would grab you visually in a deeply and viscerally like disgusting sort of way. 
And it explores a lot of themes of coming of age and girlhood because we're following these two sisters, Araceli and uh, Mirasol. And it's also a pretty short book, very short chapters as well. Each of the chapters have um, like a quippy name, like there's one called Karate in Winter, one called The Things We Leave Behind, Exoskeleton, stuff like that. And again, the prose is very poetic. The chapters like occasionally alternate perspective or just like point of view in terms of third person or second person or first person. And yeah, I just think that it was very like naturalistic. It was very much about the body and then also nature and sun, wind and water and snow. It, I don't know, it just, it felt really unique and it's definitely like a weird, fiction type of book but still like narratively very powerful so yeah i'm gonna rate this four stars because um i found it there were moments of it that i found difficult to get through not just because of the nature of the content but also because i felt that in there were some moments that felt a bit heavy-handed or on the nose i suppose but you know i think this is a small press book too it's published by broken river books um and yeah good morning <laughs> it is the next day i finished reading hammer and ho actually i loved it rated it five stars it was such an interesting zoom in on to labor organizing in the south and anti-communism in the early 20th century before even McCarthyism was like a thing um during like World War II even and also racial segregation and how that was approached and tackled within communist parties and gendered differences and the feminist struggle within the labor movement and within the communist organizers. It was so inspiring and informative. And like, there are so many different names of organizations and people that I didn't know like even existed, you know? So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that one. In terms of the other books that I'm gonna be reading, I'm actually not sure. So I'm like 40% of the way through Fiona and Jane. So one of the characters has been revealed to be queer, but, and I think there's a lot of side characters who are queer as well. So that's interesting. Um but it feels like like it feels like a bit of a gritty coming of age in some ways and yeah i don't know it's kind of difficult to read because of that i guess guys look at my pothos and the planter so cute anyway just got distracted i actually forgot to mention this in the vlog but i'm literally going to new york city um <laughs> i'm going to new york city today and I might vlog that, I guess, um, because I'm gonna be visiting some of my friends and I'm gonna be going to some bookstores. I'm really, really excited. Hello. <laughs> it is Monday after my weekend in New York. I filmed a couple of clips of me going into bookstores. I visited quite a few but it was just a one weekend trip and I didn't have any time to film because I was staying with my friend. I didn't have any like real privacy. I didn't want to film on the street. Also, it was so fucking cold out. Like snowstorms basically when I was there, it was kind of wild. But I did finish a couple books on my trip because you know, it's New York City. You, you're, you're on the fucking subway half the time. You're walking around and listening to audiobooks. So I finished Fiona and Jane. Also the lighting is kind of weird. I'm sorry about that, but I finished Fiona and Jane and I enjoyed it a lot. It also was very New York central in parts of it. I think it alternates between San Francisco and New York, but there are chapters um, that are very New York. <laughs> that was really fun to read while being there. And I really liked it. I thought that the intimacy of friendship and girlhood and coming of age was explored really well, especially in the context of like diasporic Asian American women basically and a lot of like daddy issues but like it's like you have a complicated relationship to your mom you have a traumatic relationship with your dad who either like trigger warning for suicide um <laughs> who either you know committed suicide or has never been in your life or you know thus is no longer in your life and there's a lot of family history and drama inherent to this story and i think it sort of explored a lot of things 
um, in a wide ranging way, but I honestly thought that it dealt with like queerness in a weird way. So I wasn't a big fan of that, but I think that the writing in general and the story in general at large, pretty solid. So I rated it, I think four stars. Today, I actually finished Bruised by Tanya Boteju. And um, I think I'm going, I rated it like 3.5 stars maybe. I think that if I read this when I was younger, if I was in middle school or high school, I would have really appreciated it for what it was doing regarding dealing with trauma and a complicated family relationship and, and self-harm and being really hard on yourself and feeling like you have to be really tough and having these barriers up. But I think that in other ways, it was really deeply heavy handed. I mean, maybe it's because it's, you know, young adult, but I think that some of the writing of this was wasn't my favorite. But again, I think it has less to do with what the book is doing itself and more about like what my reading tastes are like. But yeah, I thought that the sort of emotional maturity arc that this our main character goes through is a growth and a learning process that I feel like the book sort of portrayed, again, really heavy handedly, but it was explicit enough that it would have been really, really helpful and it would have been, it would be really good for teenagers to read. Also, this book uses the word like brown girls and like being brown a lot, which I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of interesting to me, particularly because the love interest is referred to as brown and she's like half Taiwanese or something. Like what? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Weird, but okay, like whatever. Not the biggest gripe, but yeah, I think that it was a pretty solid young adult novel and really cute. I liked that the roller derby element was a pretty big part of it. And, you know, roller derby is just like a cool badass gay sport, in my opinion. I also have the side characters like the quirky grandmas and the annoying, but the annoying grown up theater kid aunt and, um, you know, was interesting. But like this book is also ultimately ultimately a story about grief. It's ultimately a grief story because our main character's parents both died in a car accident that our main character is really trying to deal with. Um, it's And it's obviously really hard on her. And she has a lot of really tough expectations on herself and a lot of emotional barriers that she's built to protect herself. So there's that. Um, I think that's gonna be the end of this reading vlog, honestly. <gasps> Wait, I forgot to show you the books that I hauled, the books that I got in New York. Okay, 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 let me go do that. This is still a Women's History Month vlog. So these are all books that I, um, women, 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 they wrote them. This first book is one that I brought with me to New York but didn't actually end up reading. So sorry, but Sarah Blake is a really, really awesome author and writer. She's so cool. I really loved Nama and I think, which was her first book, I believe. And it was a sort of queer feminist retelling of the story of Noah and the ark the biblical old testament story anyway i think this is like a thriller dealing with motherhood i'm really excited to get to this but i mean obviously i brought it with me to new york to read but i didn't do that i'm so sorry so i wanted to just include that in the haul because i got this as a, like a pr package a while a while ago um and then i went to this really beautiful bookstore cafe called cafe con libros and um, I'll insert like a clip over here. And it's uh, this really tiny like space in Brooklyn, I think in, in Crown Heights. Um, it has, there's no seating inside for customers, but they have really, really, really good coffee and tea. My friend Kaya works there. If you go in, say, hi, Kaya. Um, I, I know Sunny from a Sunny Book Nook. <laughs> Anyway, they have a really, really cool selection of books by women authors and particularly authors of color and queer authors and non-binary authors. Really cool, really cool. But um, the book that I picked up from there was Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godin, who I believe is a Black British author. And this is a book that I've heard Kayla from Books and Lala talk about and really enjoy. And I keep on trying to find an audiobook version of it, but I can't find it anywhere through my library. I think it's because it's like a British book and um, I don't know. It, I think it's a recent release as well so that might be part of it but I love the cover and it's just I don't know I think there's a rabbit on it. Interesting. I know Kayla's trying to do a rabbit theme reading vlog at some point but yeah 
the author Salen Godin actually like follows me on Twitter. I really don't know why. Um, <laughs> but I I just really want to read her book. I think there's another one coming out soon. So I picked this up from Cafe Con Libros, and then um I went to another bookstore in Brooklyn, but on like a completely different area, and it's called the Center for Fiction. This bookstore is absolutely delightful and lovely. Beautiful tall bookshelves and sweet ladders and big windows. It's in a more commercial area of Brooklyn, I believe. My friend Rocky works there, so if you run into them, say hi. Uh, <laughs> be like, I know Sunny, I watch Sunny's videos. Um, they're really cool. And they actually gave me a massive discount on these three books that I got, who are, again, all written by women. The bookstore also gives you these, like, free um, bookmarks, which is so cool. I have one here that's Zora Neale Hurston that they gave me, and the back is, like, a really sweet illustration. I have one that's of James Baldwin, again, same illustration. One of Octavia Butler, which is so amazing. And then um, the one that I'm using in this book right now is... The one of Toni Morrison. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the book that I'm reading that I got from the store is New Animal by Ella Baxter. Honestly, all the books that I got are like pink. It's very slay, in my opinion. Again, Women's Month, okay? Women's Month slay. But uh, this is about a woman. It's in Australia. The author is Australian, I believe. It's about a woman who does the makeup and hair of dead bodies, and her family runs like a funeral business, basically. And they're I think set in it's like set in Melbourne or something. I'm this far into the book so not far at all. I fell asleep on the bus trying to read this <laughs> coming back home. Rose is really nice so far. It feels very like Otessa Moshfaggy and very like you know depressed women fiction, mentally ill woman fiction. Uh, she does, has a lot of casual sex with men and she's dealing with a lot with like trauma and feelings because, and obviously death is a huge thing in this book, but early on in the book, her mom dies and her mom is like this rock of her, of her family life because she's very like quirky and eclectic and sweet. And so now I think she's like reeling from that. Yeah, I think it's gonna be like an emotional but pulled back sort of read, I can already tell. So excited to get to this. And then I got a short story collection called How to Wrestle a Girl. I'm a cover buyer, like what can I say? I picked it up because it's a short story collection. I love the I love the cover. And it says on the back, in biology class, a chorus of students torment a teacher to near insanity. And that interested me because a chorus of students, I wonder if there's a collective we voice. I love that in books. While in Bear Bear Harvest, TM, people sell their excess fat and skin for food processing as part of a ghoulish but satisfying tradition. So that feels kind of speculative. Many of the stories set in Southern California follow a teenage girl in the aftermath of her father's death and capture her sister's and mother's encounters with men of all ages, as well as the girl's budding attraction to her best friend Esperanza. So it feels like very queer and interesting and weird. I love weird queer women fiction. So excited to get to this. These are both books that are short and as is this one. This one is the shortest one. It's the smallest one. And this is Four Minutes by Mat Natalia Deleva. And I think this was translated from Bulgarian. Is that the language they speak in Bulgaria? Um, anyway, <laughs> really. Uh, so the back says it's about gay women. Slay. Four minutes centers around Leah. Leah? Leah? An orphan who suffered daily horrors growing up and now struggles to integrate into society as a gay woman. She confronts her trauma by trying to volunteer at an orphanage and to adopt a young girl, a choice that is frustrated over and over by bureaucracy and pervasive stigma against gay women. In addition to Leah's narrative, the novel contains nine other standalone character studies of other frequently ignored voices. So that's interesting. Um, there's so many books and pieces of media out there that are about lesbians with dead parents. Interesting phenomenon. But yeah, I am excited to get to this because very short chapters, very short book. I love a short book. I love a beautiful cover. And it's translated, I'm pretty sure. And from a country that I don't read that many books from. So that's exciting. Here's my book stack, my uneven book stack of Bruce, which I just now finished. Clean, which I plan on reading soon. And then of course, all the books that I got in New York. How exciting. But I think that's the end of my vlog. I'm sorry I don't look that cute today. I didn't do my makeup or anything. It's because I was doing my makeup to go out every day uh, <laughs> over the weekend. And I think my skin has been taking a beating due to that. And also because when I travel, my skin flares up. But I think this is the end of the reading vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Happy International Women's Month. And, you know, uh, long live the proletarian feminist revolution. Amen. Inshallah. <laughs> Bye.